Islam is a religion of peace. Let's make two things clear. ISIL is not Islamic. As the crimes of terror by the Islamic State continue, so does the ongoing debate about the role religion plays in this extremist ideology. While many point to religion as the crux of the issue, others say that radicalization and acts of terror are about more than that. Here in studio, we've got Sun News contributor Tarek Fatah and Imam Sharia Sheikh of the North American Muslim Foundation. Thank you both for being here. Imam Sharia, let Thank me you. start with you. Do you think, or does religion at all, play any role in motivating ISIS? Well, obviously, uh, it does. I mean, according to them, uh, it's a very main uh, motivation. Uh, this is not to say that uh, the implementation of religion is, is how uh, Muslims across the world would see it. Mm -hmm. But obviously, they would say that, yes, Islam, we're following Islam as is, uh, which we would, of course, disagree with. Mm -hmm. Tarek? Well, to, to quite a degree, what I find it quite uh, uh, condescending is when people who are not Muslim, who have never been uh, you know, raised as, uh, as a Muslim, well, Obama to a certain degree, come up and use uh, my faith to make a political point, which is to say Islam has got nothing to do with this. Well, of course it is. The point is, which Islam are we talking about? There are multiple Islams, there are multiple variations. Uh, the core principles are, uh, are five principles are the same all over. But the conflict within Islam uh, has predated uh, Western civilization to, uh, to a very large degree. And to, for non-Muslims to one way or the other, to either declare that Islam is fundamentally flawed or to say Islam is fundamentally peaceful, is n not, shouldn't be their problem. Mm. They should be discussing what w needs to be done to end a war. I want to bring up Harun Siddiqui, uh, a columnist. He wrote a piece in the Toronto Star just last week. And here's what he said in his piece. He said, the long-term solution to ending terrorism by some Muslims, homegrown or otherwise, is to end Western wars on many Muslims. Let me start with you, Imam. Well, abs absolutely. I mean, if you look at, uh, you know, the area of Iraq and what exactly happened there, I mean, uh, you know, you had, uh, for example, a situation in which about 1.5 million Iraqis were killed as a direct result of a, of a U.S. invasion and occupation. And uh, beyond that, you know, there was the Nouri al-Maliki government and then the training of the elite commandos by U.S. special forces. You had James Steele, James Kaufman, who actually trained the Shia death squad. So you had about, according to an estimate, 100,000 Iraqi Sunnis were killed so I mean, uh, a sectarian, uh, you know, it was a, it was, it, it was a very, very big mess, and uh, so, absolutely. So you think this is retaliation then? I think it's, uh, it's, it's definitely connected to those civil war situations that, that, that were brought about. Um, you know, this became a sectarian war, and um, and of course, you know, like I said, the death squads would go in and it would kill Sunnis. Sunnis felt victimized. Right. And uh, somehow ISIS has been for them as if, you know, they were providing security now. And uh, despite their aggressiveness. Tarek, what do you I, think? I, I would completely disagree with Harun Siddiqui's uh, premise because it reduces the conflict within Islam to a situation where you can place blame and um, make it easy. Uh, uh, the West was has nothing to do with two of the most gruesome genocides of the past few decades. The three million killed in Bangladesh and half a million slaughtered in Darfur. These one was a Sunni Muslim, fair-skinned people of my background or Imam Sharia's background, carrying out a slaughter of from a million to three million people in 1971 in Bengal of dark-skinned, shorter uh, height uh, Sunni Muslims. The entire Arab world, Iran and everyone else, Turkey included, supported. Pakistan in that slaughter. You look at Darfur, where half a million Muslims are slaughtered by the Arab Janjaweed. The rest of the Islamic world didn't speak. There is, it would not be correct to say the West has no role to play. Everything I say or do has an impact on someone else. We're in an interconnected world. You cannot dismiss colonialism to have had its effect, but then you cannot dismiss 600 years of Turkish colonialism of taking over Arab land, taking over Kurdish land, uh, you know, attacking uh, Iran for 100, uh, almost 200 years of wars went on at a time when the United States of America and Israel, which is 
or India, the Hindu and, uh, and the Jew conspiracy, these didn't exist. What we're seeing in the Middle East, does that not revel in the essence of jihadism? Well, obviously it is, but what I, going back to the uh, Tariq Fatah's point, I mean, I, again, you know, with respect, I would disagree, because if you read uh, Mr. Fatah's book, one thing that he continuously narrates is the role of the imperial powers in the Middle East uh, throughout. I mean, I can, I have so many quotes, I wouldn't know where to start, but basically one is that CIA has been part and parcel or in training uh, certain groups, in arming certain groups. Now, I agree with him completely, Muslims are not off the hook. Uh, you know, there should not be civil war, no matter who trains who. But the point is, uh, you know... No, no, I, still... I don't disagree. This. If CIA is involved in uh, uh, the Taliban wars, then all the Islamists who today are objecting to CIA were receive, at the receiving end. My point is that Muslims with the same perspective and who do believe in the nation state were opposed to the American involvement in Afghanistan, whether it was in favor of bin Laden or whether it was against. The point is that without bin Laden or without Al-Qaeda, whether America went in or not, without Nur al-Malki, the dirty game that he played, Americans couldn't have done anything. Mm -hmm. We have provided them with the uh, uh, c conduits uh, through which they have uh, been able to control, if that claim is correct. My contention is no. Fundamentally, Muslims have been, since the death of the Prophet, been at each other's throats for power, not even for faith, because no one disagrees on the five basic principles of Islam, um, uh, which, which we shouldn't go into detail, but is devoid of politics. Nothing in my faith requires an Islamic state. And everything that every Islamist wants today is an Islamic state through the act of jihad. And then we deny that jihad is just about peace. Not at all. The invasion. Uh, I, th I think that's a very broad generalization. Well, not general at all, but it, it, uh, I mean, I, I, you know, I personally, I think state is not. I mean, wherever there are Muslims in a community, um, quite naturally, they will go back to whatever the model of the political model that they are used to, that they know about, which is the Khilafat al Rashid. Why? No, we no, don't but, know. We're no, both me, Canadians. No, but let me say. Let me okay. finish this. There are Muslims in, in, for example, Palestine or Iraq or wherever they are. Wherever they are, they would like to see their political administration mimic the best model that they know about. And that would be the, the glorious caliphate. Now, I, I know you may not agree with the glorious no, caliphate. I, my would point, you agree with the glorious caliphate? Oh, absolutely. As a Muslim, I believe that, that that caliphate, these were the people that were trained by the prophet, that were relatives of the prophet, and they took on you know state responsibilities, and they did a great job. Unfortunately, the caliphate had its tenure, and then it ended. I want to ask well, you... Well, let me put it this way. If that's the golden period of Islam, three of the caliphs were murdered. That's because they were people, uh, men of the people. I no, no, you know, no, That's no. because okay. they were right there. I understand. I, wanna, I don't criticize. I want to get, you know, get one question in, one yeah. last question in. One last question in. If imperialism is to blame, which many isolationists in the U.S. and Canada would argue, and I think you have too, Imam Sharir, if imperialism is to blame and they're, and they're retaliating against Western intervention, what was it... The, what was the crime that the Christians and the Yazidis committed? Christians who, by the way, predate Islam by 600 years. Absolutely. Marisa, good question. And this is what makes me very suspicious and very, in fact, uh, concerned about the, these ISIS and their claim to the caliphate. You see, caliphate is first and foremost about, um, uh, about upholding God's law. And they, apparently, for one reports that I've come, come across, they just uh, went in and they threatened Yazidis, made them run up the mountain, you know, killed Yazidis, uh, you know, persecuted people, even Muslims. And, and this is not the caliphate that we know about. This is not the caliphate that we would like uh, in Muslim but, majority. Uh, here's a point, Sharyar. Every caliphate after the first row caliphs has been an imperial power. If we are against imperialism, we have to be against Arab imperialism. Under what law, under what guidance did uh, uh, the Arab uh, Caliphate invade India, where I come from? How did they invade Persia? On what grounds would they invade Egypt? Now we have even the Umayyad Mosque, uh, was uh, St. John's the Baptist Cathedral, was raised to the ground and uh, a church was built. So if anyone in ISIS, now I'm not saying that's the normative, I'm saying if we look back at those caliphs, and we find that the Turks in the 15th century take over mm -hmm. Saint, uh, uh, Hagia Sophia and turn it 
the, uh, the church of the Eastern Orthodox uh, uh, Christianity and turn it into a mosque. Then you have justification. So the right. point being... No, but, no, but Tariq, right. you know that this is not Islam. All right. I right? understand, but they can invoke right. it. I have yeah. to end it there. Okay. So okay. that's all the time we have. Thank you both for joining me. We'll do this again.